Gash Managing Director at Actionable, where we bring together brands, nonprofits, and publishers to drive meaningful engagement and action with their communities in a way that feels right in that moment. Um, and in this moment in time, um, there's never been a more urgent need to drive awareness, education, and support for women and girls in Iran. Um, this is following the death of Masa Amini um, by the hands of the regime and the morality police and the escalating attacks on protesters in the weeks since. Um, we are very grateful to the Female Quotient for pulling together this space um, very last minute so we can bring attention to this issue and raise awareness about what we can do in our community. Sorry, the microphone's just gone out. Oh, it's, it keeps doing that. Oh, thank you. Maybe we can that one. Oh. This one seems to be, oh, we're back, we're back. Yes, so raising awareness of um, actions we can take as individuals and within our companies um, to be able to support women and girls in Iran. Um, I'm especially grateful to this woman next to me um, for joining us to be able to give us some of the context as an Iranian-American actress living in New York. Um, for anyone who doesn't know Mojan Mano, she is um, an incredibly accomplished actress and writer who is well, uh, most well known for her roles in House of Cards and Blacklist. She has a pilot that she's written with HBO um, that is going to give some background about Iran in the 1950s, pre-revolution. And she's been a leading voice in the protests in New York, driving awareness and action behind this issue. So I can think of no better person to speak to us today. And thank you so much for joining us. I know it was all very last minute. Thank you. I think, does this work? Oh, okay. Yay, everything is working. <laughs> so yeah. thank you so much. And if you could just start by giving us a little bit of the context and the history of Iran, pre-revolution and post-revolution. So some of the themes in your show. Okay, so there's a, I'm gonna like try to make this incredibly quick and not too super boring. However, this is what's going on. In the early 1950s, Iran had a demo democratically elected prime minister. This was the first time this had happened in like the history of Iran, right? What he did was he um, took back control of Iranian oil. So oil is obviously at the center of all of, all of these, all of our historical woes. But he took back control of the oil, which had been in the hands of the British. Um, the British uh, didn't like that, obviously, and uh, got the US and the CIA involved to overthrow this prime minister, Mohammad Mossadegh. So they overthrew him successfully. They, there's like a coup, there's a book about it. It's called All the Shah's Men. It's really, really up. And so they, they, they just masterminded it and did it. And so they put the Shah back in power and the Shah was sort of a, a very weak figure. Uh, he, he was sort of a slave to the West. He did whatever UK wanted him to do. And, and he was not uh, beloved by his people. So this went on for, a, he, was, he reigned for 25 more years or so. And, um, and the people became, Iranian people became so disenfranchised, right? The, 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 the disparity between the upper and lower classes was just, it was egregious. And so Khomeini, there was like a gap and Khomeini took advantage of this gap and was like, hey, you guys are upset. We should, we should, we're gonna, we're gonna revolt. And they did this whole, they had this whole revolution under the assumption that it was, that it was going, they were gonna overthrow the Shah and they were gonna have a freer society. Obviously, one dictator always sort of replaces another. So within six months, the Ayatollah Khomeini was like, ha ha ha, you guys are all gonna wear hijab. This is an Islamic state. And now this is where we are. So I think a lot of people don't know, they don't have really any idea that before 1979, Iran was sort of a, you know, a freer, what, more westernized, more open society in the 70s. I mean, I have so many people whose, whose parents are like, oh, we traveled to Iran in the 70s, it was gorgeous. It was, it was not what people think of when they think of Iran right now. So this pro these protests are sort of, directly uh, um, related to what happened in 1953. Um, and uh, what, what these women are protesting against is, I mean, obviously it started with the death of one person and it's, it's similar to the trajectory of George Floyd in the sense that the death of the very brutal death of one person at the hands of police that was caught you know, in a photograph, not a video, um, sort of, it blew the top off of uh, 
rage that had been simmering for for 50 years, right? So that's how it started, and then it became this feminist movement, and then it turned into a call to overthrow the regime. This hasn't happened in the whole 43 years of the Islamic regime. The other really important thing to note, and there's been a lot of confu confusion about this, the Islamic Republic of Iran is the official name of the country that the Ayatollah Khomeini like gave Iran, right? Before it was just Iran. Um, when we are protesting and, and calling for the end of the Islamic regime, the end of the Islamic Republic, we are not protesting against Islam. This has been a huge point of confusion. It is why very prominent Muslims are not speaking out about this. Um, they don't want to appear as though they are anti-Muslim. And I have had, I mean, I rarely look at the comments on my Instagram, but I've made the mistake of doing that in the last couple of weeks. And people are like, how can you say that about Islam, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh. it's not, it's just because the, the government of Iran, the country is called the Islamic Republic of Iran. And what they're fighting for is to, to return to a secular, to a secular state, not a theocracy. Can you just give us a bit more background in terms of what oppression has meant up until now, like um, in terms of what women aren't allowed to do, just for anyone who isn't aware of like the, what's what everyone's been. Fighting. Sure. I mean, there's the man mandatory hijab. There's it's not just a headscarf. It's sort of the whole the whole body, <laughs> you know, whatever. Cover everything. I've been to Iran only once and it was in the winter. So it was just like, dressing for New York. It was fine. But uh, you can't go anywhere without like covering your bum and you have to all your hair has to be you know, covered and, and it's gotten stricter. It gets stricter or less strict with every president. So there are some presidents who've been like, yeah, whatever, and people start to wear their headscarves farther and farther back. And then with this president, um, it's gotten incredibly, incredibly fierce, the, the, the restrictions. So there's that, there's, um, you know, there's, there's things like you, women, women can't perform or sing in public, they can't, um, uh, they can't divorce their husbands freely. They need permission from their husbands to, to do many things, including travel. They don't get custody of their children after the age of seven. Um, so there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of restrictions on women um, in everyday life. I, 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 this is just so, so nominal and not a big, but just to illustrate how much I didn't understand. I was in my early 20s when I went to Iran and and we were looking for, I was with my cousin, my male cousin, and we were looking for a building, and um, I found the building number. I went one way, he went the other way, and I found the building number, and I called to him. I was like, hey, I found it. And like just me raising my voice in the street caused like every single person in the street to stare at me, and he was like, oh my God, my American cousin is gonna like, <laughs> is gonna cause trouble in the streets. He was, he was so nervous for me because he knew I didn't know just basic etiquette. I raised my voice in the street, right? Um, so that's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that personal story. Um, and Massa, I think as well, was killed because of showing just part of her hair under these rules. And since then, everyone has been protesting and trying to fight and, and raise their voice about this issue. Um, can you just tell us a little bit more about what's happening now we've, and what, we, what we've seen? I know that sometimes the news reports over here have been slow to get to us, but some of the things that have happened over the last few weeks um, to students that have been like joining this fight, um, to prisoners that we've been seeing over the weekend, what's been happening there? Um, yeah, so uh, one really important thing to note is that like all of our favorite newspapers, the New York Times, Washington Post, everybody, everybody, everybody has been very, very, very slow to report this. So for the first two weeks, I would say I was getting all my news from Instagram, which is pathetic, right? It's just pathetic. Um, we were just get personal posts from people just holding their phones out and taking video. This is what's happening on this street in this city. This is what's happening on this street in this city. And then we, we the Iranian American diaspora, whatever the Iranian diaspora, you know, re like shared it and it like spread like wildfire. And that's, that's how the news got out. We put, we, we, you know, I went to the <laughs> New York Times and protested outside of the New York Times. I don't know how much that did, but like, for example, the the Daily, the the podcast, the Daily didn't do a, a piece on what was going on for like 
I don't know, 12, 13 days, and like the queen got her own podcast when she died, but not, <laughs> but you know, and that was pretty quick. So I, they were very, very slow to report, and they were very um, inaccurate in their reporting. One of the very first articles about this in the New York Times what, uh, said that um, the protests were fueled by um, the economy, by, you know, whatever, like the Iranian people's uh, disgruntlement with uh, the, the economy and sanctions and that, that kind of thing, which is, which is just not true. Um, sorry, what was the beginning part of your question? Um, what's going on? Uh, oh, yes, okay. just okay. how we can find out what's going on. Yeah. And yeah, like what's been going on over the last few weeks. Okay, um, so really uh, it started with, you know, people taking to the streets, right? One of the, one of the big things that you're going to see in a lot of people's videos, and this is like such a massive, massive form of resistance is women are walking through the streets without their headscarves. Like it's crazy. Um, and the risks that they're taking on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's so ridiculous. No, it's this ridiculous. No, I, I think Farah was just telling me, um, for anyone who doesn't know about some of these situations, for example, um, a 22-year-old woman who was just putting her hair up to be able to join the protests and was shot by the regime. Um, and Hades, yeah. yeah, there's been a lot of that. Sorry, guys. There's been a lot of um, teenagers. I mean, mostly this movement is, there's 60% of the population of Iran is under the age of 30. So the, I, I saw this great sign at one of the protests the other day that was like, they fucked with the wrong generation. Like, right? Gen Z is Gen Z everywhere. They're like, we don't take this. You can't do this to me. And you're like, oh my God, you're amazing. So these teenagers are like going out on the street. They're taking their headscarves off. They are actually literally risking their lives. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a euphemism. It's, not, this is the, it's a reality, right? They're actually risking their lives. They're killing 16, 17, 18-year-olds. They just... Um, uh, uh, the morality police, uh, uh, th they invaded this school uh, last week, last Wednesday, and, and um, started, you know, beating up these students and killed a 15-year-old girl. Um, this has happened um, at Sharif University, uh, which was, is the, the, the biggest university in Tehran. Um, they, the, the police just sort of, uh, locked them in, pushed them down into the parking lot and just started like firing at them. Right. It's like, if that happened, like at NYU, like it, people would go crazy. The entire world would report on it. It took days for people to start to, for the news outlets. I mean, BBC has done a pretty good job. And other than that, it's like shocking that it doesn't get covered. These major, major events, um, Avin prison, which is the prison that they take all of these political prisoners to, the dissidents, the journalists, like anybody who's ever dared to say a word against the regime. Um, Saturday, uh, it somehow caught fire. It was unclear who started the fire, but, you know, uh, and, and there's very, it's very hard to get accurate information because they've... Um, they've really limited internet, the internet in Iran. So like the, you, people are obviously, they, they're still managing to get online, but it's very, very slow. It's just super delayed. So they're trying to control the information that, that gets out. Um, what am I missing? No, I think that's, that's good because we're gonna start talking about what we can do. I think we are lucky enough that we're not risking our lives over here for us to be able to start raising okay. awareness on this issue. So I think what we talk about is how we can do that as individuals, as a very powerful female community over here, stand up for the women and girls in Iran who are being attacked, who are risking their lives. Um, one thing in terms of a symbol that we've seen is people tying up their hair like that poor girl who was killed. We actually have hair bands downstairs in the restrooms, I, I noticed. I saw that, yeah. So um, we're gonna be hanging around all day and if you want to come to us, like one symbol is, being, is showing yourself tying up your hair that we can put into reels. I think it's important to follow some social media accounts on Instagram that what might be quicker to report on some of the things that are happening there. Yeah, there's a bunch of um, accounts. I don't know what the best way to sort of tell you guys about them is, but um, there's there's one called 1500 Tasvir, T-A-S-V-I-R, and that has that's just got uh, you know daily sev like several videos of several footage, like footage of what's happening daily in Iran. That's a really great one to follow. And then Christian Amanpour has done a lot of really good reporting on this and interviewed various people. And, and she's pretty, she's pretty um, timely, like she's, she's on it, right, as it's happening. 
Um, but there's a lot of other ones. That are... Yeah, and I think we'll probably have a way to be able to share with everyone. We'll figure out a way afterwards. But I think also just in terms of like the companies we work at, the brands we work for, like some brands have been taking stands and using their platforms as well. If we can encourage that within the community, Balenciaga and Gucci are examples, Balenciaga in particular, like removed everything from their social media feeds so that they could really call attention to like women life freedom as their post. So I think us encouraging that in the brand community as well. And then finally, we were talking about some government actions and like ways that we can put pressure on the government to be able to support this issue. This isn't a political issue, it's a human rights issue. Um, but like we, we do want our government to be supporting and using the right language um, when they are talking about this. We actually have a QR code here which will launch really easy ways to take action on this um, by being able to email your senators, your reps, and tweet them to ask them to add pressure to this. They will have letters that they can give to Biden right now. Um, but if you wouldn't mind just explaining a little bit more about why that's important. Well, I, I just want to say just uh, by way of example, uh, Canada came out last week or the week before and said and, and called the Islamic Republic of Iran a terrorist state. They, they actually called them out. And then Justin Trudeau, that was, uh, you know, Justin Trudeau followed that up by saying that they were going to invest a lot of money in, in um, uh, freezing the assets of any one of these 10,000 officials and associates of the Islamic regime who have property, who have money in Canadian banks. They're, they're like, we're not letting them into the country. Like they, they laid out a plan of how to hold the Islamic regime uh, responsible. Uh, accountable and also they very clearly condemned the Islamic regime. Um, in the European community, we believe that the reason that Biden hasn't done this is because he's doing a he's trying to negotiate the, a nuclear deal with Iran. And so he's come out and said, he's come out and said, yeah, we stand with the women of Iran. Kamala Harris only just on Friday after a month, we stand with the women of Iran. We blah 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 blah. Peaceful protest. La la la. There, first of all, the protests are violent. I mean, the, the people aren't violent, but they're getting cracked down, right? It, it's super violent. They're, they're murdering children. Um, and they're, they're just saying, you know, we stand with the women of Iran. Compared to Justin Trudeau's language, which is like they're in a terrorist state and they're not allowed in our country and their assets aren't allowed in our country. And we're going to invest $76 million in a in an initiative to get that going to make sure we can hold them accountable. I mean, that's like, that's bananas. But we are going into winter and we are, we need oil and gas and Russia invaded Ukraine and we are, we have, you know, worldwide shortages on just about everything. Heading into winter, they're like, mm, let's like how to hedge our bets. See which way this goes. Th this is what we think in the Iran community. I mean, the, the, the language is so mild. Biden has helped with, um, relieving the, the 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 issue with the inter with internet right like helping quietly trying to get companies to to enable them to to like i don't actually know anything about how that works but helping with the internet i'm gonna sound like an actress like he's helping with the internet that's what he's doing um but uh yeah that that's what our that's what canada our neighbors are saying and that's what we're saying it's very troubling Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that this QR code will launch to actions that will be able to speak to that. Um, and I, yeah, in terms of us being women, individuals in our companies, like all of these things that we can do. Sorry, Sorry can I say one more thing? Yes, if of you're course. Having, it, it, somebody posted this as like a good guy, a journalist, Iranian guy who I follow, and he's very witty and whatever. He said this thing. He was like, during George Floyd, people were accused of just posting on their Instagram to like pay lip service to, to what's going on. They actually weren't doing anything to help change, um, uh, to help change people's views, to help change, uh, you know, systemic racism, et cetera. In this case, we want the lip service, like give us lip service, That's right? A really like good point. point, like post it really, it takes no time at all. 
and it really, really, really makes a difference. They're, we're reaching a tipping point. Like, I, I just want to say one thing that happened last week that was just bananas, and, and, and go home and look this up because it's so crazy. It comes like from a sci-fi movie, but there's Islamic State television. They were having like a political meeting, right? There's like Ibrahim, it's Raisi, the president, and the Ayatollah, and like this like, you know, room full of men, and they're like having this meeting, whatever. And then there, the the program was hacked. And then they cut to uh, re, um, a picture of the Ayatollah in flames, pictures of four of the um, prominent murdered girls, and then uh, people. the soundtrack was people chanting, uh, women, life, freedom, women, life, freedom, and the, the blood of our youth is on your hands. That was a state-run television program that was hacked. They're getting, they're making progress. And part of the reason they're making progress is because people are shouting all around the world. We're going to protests, we're posting, we're posting, 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 we're sharing, we're reposting. Lip service is greatly welcomed in this case, right? Please, like, if you see something, that's why it matters that, Bal like, Balenciaga posted and everyone in the Iranian community was like, oh my God, I love Balenciaga! Right, like, everyone went crazy, Gucci, oh my God! Gucci, I love you, Gucci, right? Like, they did it, right? And so, and that means something. And if you also can, like, do it a couple times, <laughs> um, it, it really, 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 really makes a difference. Yeah, you, you can do that. You can, you can just hashtag, like, if you search the hashtag Massa Amini or Iran protests or Iran uh, revolution or free, free Iran. Iran or free Iran, like, any of those hashtags you will find so much content that you can repost, you can put your own spin on it, you can, whatever, you know? And also use those hashtags so that people can, can, can find you. Mojan is too humble to say, but I think everyone should be following her as well because she's posting a lot of great information on this. I went from, I, I never post. I hate Instagram, I'm really hard, I, ugh, it's horrible, your actor, whatever. I post, I'm like posting every single day. I'm on my phone all day long. A friend of mine was like, I feel like we're trying to topple the regime from, from our cell phones. And I was like, we are, we are. We're all just like, how do we do this? How do we spread it? How do we time it so that it goes viral? What do we, I mean, I just spent like all day Friday making some dumb video. It got like 300,000 views, right? Like people are starting to pay attention. And when you reach a tipping point, Still, right now, people are like, oh, what's happening with Iran? I, I you know I read something about that. What, what, what was that again? It, the more we talk about it, we'll reach this tipping point where, where like everybody, everybody knows, everybody's talking about it. Our senators can't ignore us. Our president can't ignore us. Thank you so, so much. And come and find us for us to be able to do our own pose.